Hey guys, my name is Shai, and in this pick a card reading, we're going to be tuning into Saturn to receive some, some energy, basically. <laughs> I feel very strongly that I'm supposed to mention here that my readings are always, always, always first and foremost energy transmissions, right? Energy transmissions. Anything that I manage to verbalize with my choice of English words is like the secondary layer, layer that is there to kind of give your mind something to chew on, but really this is the, the energy transmission. So <sighs> this is absolutely a timeless reading. It's good for you for whenever you synchronize with this, but I do want to mention just for anybody who is watching this in 2022, that for you guys, this is tied to this year's Saturn retrograde, uh, retrograding in Aquarius. And Saturn went retrograde a few weeks ago before I posted this. And I have actually been trying to get to this video for, for a few weeks, basically, ever since Saturn went retrograde. But I just never could quite, like, I can, I, it, it, I mean, I had time. I did have time to do it, but I just, it just never felt like the right moment. Um, I, I, I always felt kind of off. I felt like it just wasn't the right moment, basically. Long story short, right? And, but here I am doing it now and, Even those of you watching this after Saturn moves direct, so Saturn is going to be retrograde all the way till the end of October in 2022, and then the rest of the year he's going to be moving direct, but he's still going to be in shadow, which means he's going to be moving over the degrees that he already like crossed and then retrograded and then crossing again. So it's just kind of like third sweep, kind of like a take three <laughs> type of thing across this energy. So it, he's essentially kind of in this review vortex for the rest of 2022 and the beginning of 2023 also so anybody just kind of in that pocket of calendar time just know that anything that you're experiencing that is related to the themes that come out with these cards is directly tied to the saturn retrograde and you know if anybody is watching this in like not in that time and you're still listening to me talk about this um you could check your chart for like Saturn transits and like, you know, Saturn transits aren't always as obvious, you know, as a Saturn return or Saturn transiting your sun. For example, I'm having Saturn tran like square to my natal Jupiter. And that was a transit I didn't even like think about or notice until one day it just like appeared in my consciousness and it was like, I got to check that out. Yeah, Saturn is square to my Jupiter. And so you can be having Saturn transits more often than you might think and that can kind of explain a little bit why things in your life might be feeling the way they are so i'm very curious to see what come out what comes out in these cards because there's something kind of thick <laughs> something kind of thick about this energy and that's not really matching how i've been feeling um i've been pretty like airy fairy flying on a cloud lately but this reading since i haven't been able to quite get to it and i feel like i actually can't move forward until i do this it's like i have to do this i have to get this reading i have to make this video i have to like digest the energies that are going to come through in these four cards <laughs> it's like i need to do the, do this before i can move forward so that's kind of an underlying energy here as well this this idea that there might be something for you to just look at one more time to digest one more time to think about one more time and like digest it like really really digest it get it done and then that's going to free you up to move forward is what this kind of feels like here so okay go ahead and Pick your card. The timestamps, as always, will be down below in the description box. Okay, card number one. I have one astrological influence card here that I'm going to get just as a kind of underlying theme. And then we're going to get a bunch of tarot cards to see what else is going on for you guys. Okay. First house, the body. This is Aries energy, and this is the ignition of your soul is what I'm hearing. Like the ignition of your soul. It is time to ignite, but before you ignite. Okay, so right away, right away, I know what this is about, this, what this is for you guys. Before, maybe you've been trying to spark. Maybe you've been sparking. You've been trying to ignite. You've been trying to take off. You've been trying to lift off. 
trying to have that new start, that fresh beginning. Or, and for some of you, this could be like healing something physical in your body or just like getting, getting your energy back, something like that. But it's like, what, what is it? What is it? Why, why is like this? ignition not taking place yet and so i can already tell you there's a few there's like two two main things going on first of all there's this is like violet flame energy okay like violet flame bur like to burn away impurities that i mean maybe the word impurity isn't even the best word that's just like a convenient word the the real thing here is that there are certain energies that simply are not you and they're not yours but maybe you thought they were yours but they're not <laughs> and so it's just like burning away the frequencies energies things thoughts feelings habits people like anything in your life that is not like genuinely yours and burning that away burning that away and the second thing has to do with learning to honor your own like energy cycles your own energy cycles. So as you can see, those kind of go hand in hand. So honoring your own energy cycles is like, <laughs> it's like you've even been externally conditioned on like when to eat and how to eat and how to sleep. <laughs> okay. So it's like you think of social conditioning and you think of a, a certain type of things, you know, how you think and how, how you dress, maybe how you feel about your stuff. How, how you feel about yourself and stuff like that but this is like so you don't really need to think of it in terms of social conditioning if that's not really does if that's not really relevant but it's like no matter how much you dance to the beat of your own drum on some level this is like things to do with how your body operates like how much you exercise how you eat when you eat what you eat when you sleep where you sleep that kind of, and also sex as well, like anything that is like basic, basic, basic bodily needs. Um, you have learned in your life to respond to external cues. And I mean, ev everyone has, right? This is like really, really um, getting down to the root of something, getting down to the root of something um, in your body. And just think of how often have you had to eat because everyone else was eating, right? And this is like, you know, going out and socializing, right? You all got to eat, you all got to drink, you got to eat this, you know, and it's like, and sometimes it's like, maybe you're not really being pressured into it, but it's like, you're, you're tempted, right? If everybody else is eating nachos, it's hard to like turn down the nachos, right? Um, and, it, or if you have a family, especially if you have kids, um, and you have to, like, if you feel pressured to do the family dinner thing where you have to cook dinner, and then you have to eat a full dinner at, you know, six o'clock every night, but maybe eating a full dinner at six, six, six o'clock every night, maybe that isn't what's best for your body, but it's like you have ended up feeling like you have to do it because of these external cues. So it's like all of these pressures of human life have overridden some of the most basic cues from your own body, right? So... It's, so it's not really like social conditioning in the typical in the typical sense, right? As you can see, this is like how has Earth life, <laughs> right, forced you to ignore your own body's cycles, and this is also sleep, right? You feel like you're supposed to sleep because you only have eight hours to sleep at night, right? Because you got to get up and you got shit to do. So you sleep. <laughs> you have to cram all your sleep into eight hours, but maybe, maybe, maybe it's not for you to sleep a solid eight hours every single night. You know, you, you might've heard about different theories where people used to sleep in two separate blocks at night, like the old Victorian writings. I mean, you know, Victorian era isn't even that long ago, right? But that's how like recently this has changed. Um, a lot of old writings talk about first sleep and second sleep, how it was apparently normal as far as we can tell from the historical record that people would go to sleep sleep for about three or four hours wake up kind of tootle around talk to people have a snack like do whatever they do and the, you can do in the middle of the night with a candle to light your way and then go back to sleep again right so this is like having to force yourself to sleep in in this fashion isn't necessarily what your body wants you to do, right? Man, I can't get these cards out of the glare. One sec. Okay, I think that's better. I'll show you these more closely in a second. I just wanted to like really, <laughs> really kind of go over this because the, 
this I can see why this is coming through in a Saturn reading because if you decide to kind of really honor your body's own energy cycles that might entail some rather significant shifts in your lifestyle, right? It's like if you want to be able to sleep, to just let your body sleep when you want to sleep, right? Which could could include taking a nap in the middle of the day, could mean sleeping two different phases through the night. It could mean even following like a non 24 hour day. <laughs> it could it could mean all kinds of things depending on your own personal body and how it wants to sleep. And so if you actually wanted to experiment with that and honor your your body's requirements for sleep, that could require like changing your job, changing your work schedule, right? How how would you change your life in order to allow your body to breathe, to allow your body to experience its own cycles? Um, same thing with food, right? Maybe you discover that intermittent fasting works really well for you. Intermittent fasting. I know everyone likes to preach it. I, I really enjoy it, certain types of it, but it's not, not for everyone. So this is just one example. This is not this is not saying go intermittent fasting. This is just an example. So if you find out that you really don't want to eat after 2 p.m., right? You want to do a fast from the afternoon all the way through the evening till the morning. You might find that, okay, well now what are you going to do when you when you feel like you're supposed to be cooking your family dinner, right? Like how how are you <laughs> how are you going to navigate that, right? Things like this. Um, but the invitation here is to actually like stop stop and and figure out how how important is your body to you. How important is your body to you? What are you willing to do to honor it? What are you willing to do in order to get it into its most healthy, energized, peak physical form, right? What what are you what are you willing to do for that? No, no right or wrong answers here, but this is what you're being invited to consider. And of course, because this is the the Saturn influence coming through, there is always this invitation to like let something go. Um to really take a hard look at the th th habits that are no longer serving you and to let them go, let them go, let them go. So Saturn is pushing you to like make some adjustments at least, right? How, if you want to go big and whole hog and like make some big drastic shift, um, by like completely just rearranging your entire, entire life, you could do that. Or, you know, you could take a more moderate approach and just start tinkering with things to see like, because you, you might not even know at this point, right? You might not even know what your body actually requires because you've been overriding that's this word that keeps coming through you've been overriding your body's natural rhythms for so long that it could be entirely out of whack <laughs> um and you know, this includes like any type of hormonal birth control or <sighs> yeah I, w I just want to say especially birth control if if it's being taken specifically only for as a contraceptive, right? If you're taking hormones because of some other medical reason that uh, that might not be related here, but it's like if you're specifically just taking hormonal birth control just for contraception, that could, that's also throwing, <laughs> that also can be, right? Maybe your birth control is perfect for you. And so maybe this isn't a message for anyone, but this could be a message for someone saying that your birth control could be throwing you off, right? Throwing you off. And maybe you've been on birth control for so long, you don't even remember what it's like for your body to have its normal hormones and its normal rhythms and its normal cycles. So basically the tarot cards that came up here, Queen of Swords, <laughs> Princess of Discs, which would be Page of Pentacles, and the Ace of Swords. There's no water here. <laughs> there's no, I would say there's no fire here, but the first house, that's fire energy. So there's no water. There's no water. We have air, earth, and fire. Air, earth, and fire energy here, which is significant to me because if you're a very watery person, this to me feels like Saturn guiding you in this direction of making decisions for right here, right now, for this one particular message, for this one pocket of time, right? If you watch a lot of my videos, you don't often hear me saying like, ignore your feelings. <laughs> and that's not exactly what I'm saying here, right? But this is like, if your emotions have been an overriding force in your life, if they have been like, the th if you have been making your decisions based in your feelings, making your decisions based on your emotions. And I want to, dis this is, there's a distinction I'm guided to make here between following your intuition and following your feelings. So 
we often equate following our feelings and our emotions as following our intuition or our inner compass or our inner guidance or whatever you want to call it. We often equate those two things and that often really works because our intuition speaks to us through our feelings and our emotions. And it, there is a, like, a connection there, right? Often it's like, how do you feel? How so often we have to get out of our heads and get into our feelings so that we can follow our inner compass, right? But it's like we shouldn't correlate emotions and intuition too much because they're not exactly the same thing. They're not the same thing. It's just that our intuition speaks to us with using our emotions. That's just one way for it to communicate with us. And it's a way that, you know, in Western culture anyway, we have been very like tuned out of that. So it's been important to get our feelings back online and, and to learn to follow our feelings, right? Because usually when we follow our feelings, we feel like we're following our heart, but it's like just be, but not all feelings, not all feelings are your intuition speaking, right? Sometimes feelings are simply trauma talking, past trauma talking. Sometimes feelings are stress, right? It's just stress talking. Sometimes your feelings are just like being influenced by something that's not you, right? Sometimes your feelings are being influenced by something that's not you. They're being influenced by like some weird vibe that's flying by, by somebody else in the room, by an astrological transit you're having, right? So your feelings are not always a message from your intuition. They're not always the thing to follow. So if if you have often found yourself in life like having these like floods and floods and floods of emotions and making decisions almost entirely based on your emotions, especially as it like concerns the body, like if you feel like just to kind of run with some of the examples I've been using, if 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 the idea of not sitting down to dinner with your family at six o'clock Wednesday evening, if that brings up a flood of emotions in you and you go, oh, I couldn't ever possibly change that because of all of these feelings, right? If you, find, if you find yourself going, I can't change this habit or I can't change this situation or I don't know what to do about this problem because of all of these feelings, right? If the feelings are holding you back, that's why the feelings are not coming up here. That's why there's no en the water energy here, right? Because the feelings themselves could, it's like they're old stuck feelings, right? So in the, in this one particular situation, right? Of course, continue to using your discernment to follow your feelings if you feel that they are your intuition speaking to you in other situations. But specifically just for the theme of this one reading, it's like your feelings are not necessarily the thing to follow, right? And it's like, instead you wanna get more in touch with your body itself, your body itself. And so again, I wanna distinguish between like feelings and emotions and your senses, your senses, like the sensations in your body, the physical sensations in your body, the physical sensations in your body. Um, Cause I, I, know, I know people like personally in, in my real human life, I know people who, um, it's like they, they actually, they're kind of out of touch with their physical body. And instead of like physically sensing what their body is doing or feel or sensing, they, they like feel you with their emotions. They feel their bodily sensations emotionally. They feel their bodily sensations emotionally. Um, and I remember when I finally figured that out, just through talking to people, I was like, wow, I didn't, I never even... <laughs> I never even thought of that, right? Because that's not how I experience my body. I sense like I like to me my my the physical sensations of my body are physical sensations in my body and my emotions are separate. I mean, they can kind of influence each other, right? But I don't I don't necessarily have like an emotional reaction to physical sensations in my body, right? I but I know apparently a lot of people do. A lot of people do. And so you might like like people who get really like agitated or irritable when they're hungry, it's like the hunger is creating an emotion or pain creating an emotion or thirst creating an emotion. It, it's like, I think that's why there's this kind of invitation to drop out of emotions where your body is concerned because things have got, it, it's like, that's not always bad by the way, there's nothing wrong with this, but it's just that it has gotten like confused 
there's, there's something that's gotten confused about this. Something has gotten confused about it. So there's this invitation to really just tune into the physical sensations of your body and try to like just sense them as like neutral physical stimulus without having any emotions attached to them, right? Without having any emotions attached to them. Don't have any emotions attached to the physical sensations of your body. I mean, you can, again, I want to be perfectly clear, like there's nothing wrong with having emotional emotions attached to the physical sensations of your body if you that's something you can do in life and that can be great uh, but it's just like it's kind of being like Saturn is basically recommending this like dropping out of your emotions as like an activity as like a temporary activity you can experiment with because he thinks it's going to help you tune into the physical sensations of your body so this is not saying that any one way of existing is wrong or anything like that it's just saying that to help you find clarity and to help you find to help you figure out what's actually going on with your body, temporarily try to just set aside your emotional reactions to your body and then just physically sense it, physically sense your body to actually sit there and go, you know, instead of um, like everybody going, hey, like, you know, let's make nachos and then everyone's eating nachos um, instead of having like an emotional reaction to, oh, now I need, now, I'm, now I want to eat because everyone else is eating and this is really fun. Like we're all partying, we're eating nachos, right? And sometimes partying and eating nachos is fantastic. Nothing wrong with partying and eating nachos. But if you want to do this experiment where you want to tune into your body and decide, hmm, does my body actually want nachos right now? And you know what? Your body might want nachos right now, <laughs> but maybe it doesn't, right? Maybe it doesn't. And you want to learn to discern that. So all of this is to basically an invitation to practice discerning what your body actually wants. So get really, really like to just sense, like what does hunger actually feel like? What does thirst actually feel like? What, do, what does physical pain actually feel like in your body? Is physical pain even anything that does it actually even have to hurt, right? Does physical pain even actually have to hurt? Um, I mean, to a, on, on a certain point, yeah, physical pain is going to hurt. But, you know, depending on your own range of, like, sensitivity to pain, you, you might discover that you can actually kind of um, sense and perceive a certain range of pain in your body without actually having any emotional discomfort from it. It's like you can experience physical pain without actually experiencing any suffering from it, right? And so with these, this air energy, the Queen of Wands, the, all of this and this Ace of, Ace of Swords, or sorry, Queen of, Queen of Swords and Ace of Swords, right? This is gaining sovereignty, gaining sovereignty over... How to, how to describe... It, it feels like rising up out of the muck, but like the muck has been some kind of emotional baggage attached to your body and some, and somehow the emotional baggage attached to your body has been like interfering with your energy levels. And, you know, it's like connected to, it's like really interconnected here. It's like perhaps your, the amount of energy you have to live your life. Um, and this, in, this includes like to work, to, to have fun, <laughs> Uh, your love life, right? Your sex life, the, like your family life, the, the, your creative pursuits. It's like all of this has been impacted by your body not running at 100%. So it's it's like without your body running at 100%, how are you going to get anything else done, right? This is like, if you, you know, do you know Maslow's hierarchy of needs? It's, um, so you're basically being invited to tune right back into the bottom of the period, which is your basic, basic physical needs, like food, clothing, shelter, sleep, and sex is, I think, actually on the bottom because it's biological, physical need, right? Biological, physical need to get those needs met. And it begins by tuning into the physical sensations in your body. And this is intended to help you, like, reclaim your energy, reclaim this, like, energetic sovereignty with the Ace of Swords. This is, this is you having this, this new fresh start, right? This, the new beginning, the new idea, the new spark, right? What was the first thing I said for, for this reading? It was, like, the, to ignite, right? To ignite. I mean, you might not often associate, like, ignition with the Ace of Swords. Maybe that's more of an Ace of Wands, but this is, 
see the, the like the, this crown this light and this sword here to me even represents like your vertical alignment like the, the the alignment through all of your chakras the alignment all the way down from earth all the way up to your soul star or whatever you imagine you're aligning with right this is your vertical alignment and the, all of this it all begins with tuning into the physical sensations of your body and allowing your um your body to dictate when it wants to sleep, <laughs> for how long it wants to sleep, when it wants to eat, what it wants to eat. You know, this, in this includes like intuitive eating, right? Intuitive eating. Um, and intuitive eating can sometimes lead you to eat things that your mind might tell you is incorrect, right? Sometimes intuitive eating could mean eating a slice of pizza and your mind might say, oh, I should feel bad about eating a slice of pizza, but intuitive eating means intuitive eating, right? And oh, and so this whole thing about, you know, dropping out of your emotions just for this experiment, right? And following the physical sensations in your body, that is important for following intuitive eating because if you don't, because typically most people are emotional eaters, right? I, I'm definitely an emotional eater. <laughs> like I have struggled, I struggle a lot. Well, no, a lot less now, a lot less now, right? <laughs> so much less now than I used to, but I used to be a really bad stress eater. So, you know, emotional eating, right? Emotional eating, but if, if you disconnect like if you allow yourself to disassociate your emotional reactions to your physical sensations, then it'll be easier for you to practice something like intuitive eating. If you want to experiment with that, if you want to give that a try, um, because then your, your, your body will tell you just with a physical impulse, a physical sensation, right? You'll, you'll get that physical tug or just those physical shivers or, you know, to me, when when I when when I when I practice like body intuition, body intuition. So that's that's another thing where this is going. This is essentially to clear out your your relationship to your body, so that you can actually follow your body's impulses better and like follow your body's intuition, follow your body's instincts even. Um, and to me, you know, it's just as simple as like putting out my hand and like feeling the pull, it always feels like mag like a magnet. It feels like a magnet's pulling my hand, right? And I can look up and down a menu with my finger and like my finger will just be pulled <laughs> to like the, the item I'm like supposed to order that day, right? And it's it's good because so often, you know, I you follow my, my emotions to follow my intuition, but honestly, I think more and more and more, it, it's following the, the pull of my body, the pull of my body. But in order to be able to discern the pull of your body, your your physical, 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 physical intuition, your body's intuition. It's like you can't sense your body's intuition if your emotions are running the show, if your emotions are overwhelming the situation. Just like, you know, th this is like a stack, right? Um, it's like you can't, the first thing you need to do when you're clearing your, like if say you're just like, I don't know, somebody who's just never tried to follow their intuition before ever in their life, right? Didn't even like, and somebody who was like deeply, deeply, deeply in social conditioning and somebody who has like really just been following the crowd, right? The first thing they would need to do is to tune out what everybody else is saying so, so that they could figure out what they actually think, right? And then the next thing they would need to do is to tune out their thoughts because you can't really access your intuition, not typically through your thoughts. I mean, sometimes, sometimes you receive messages that are verbal, right? And that can feel like following your thoughts, but mostly most humans need to still their thoughts in order to be able to access their intuition in any meaningful capacity. So first it's get rid of everybody else and then it's get rid of your thoughts and then it's even get rid of your emotions and then it, then what are you left with bam now you're le left with your body's intuition and you got to think like your soul is like ener like energetically like surgically attached to your body so following your body is following your soul right following your body is following your soul your soul is guiding your body in each and every moment but typically you you are overriding your soul's guidance so that you're overriding the way your soul is trying to guide your body because your thoughts and feelings and then everybody else's thoughts and feelings are overriding that and they're getting in the way so this is like the final thing for you to drop out of here is to not permanently not forever just develop the skill just practice doing this intermittently so that you have the ability to do it when you choose to do it right it's just like practicing meditation so that you can learn to still your mind now you want to be practicing stilling your emotions so that in when you feel like it when you want to when you think it's useful you can drop into the physical sensations of your body and then access your body's intuition your body's instincts and that um from that place, this, this, I could even go bigger with this, right? From, from that place, once you have practiced this a little bit, then you can like, <laughs> whoo, wow, you can, you can live life from that place, right? 
we can live life from that place so so often like hours and hours and hours every day you can live life life from that place where you're just free and clear right your thoughts aren't racing there are no thoughts <laughs> like i mean you know maybe there's blips of thoughts but your thoughts aren't racing your your mind feels clear right your mind feels clear you're just aware of some thoughts that are passing through your mind and you observe them and you let them go and your your emotional body is clear right you have you you have feelings right your your feelings are enjoyable you feel peace you feel love you feel joy maybe sometimes you feel sorrow or grief over something but that passes you just let it run through you and then most but for the most part you just move through your life just allowing your soul to guide your body and you just walk feeling so clear feeling so pure feeling so you right feeling so you and when you get into that space you never have trouble making a decision again because your body just knows where to go right because you're essentially letting letting your soul take over the driving of your body but this doesn't make you this isn't to be very clear this is not about getting d disconnected from your body i like i think some of us have tried to get into that place by disconnecting from our body but this is actually getting so connected from your body that you really become one with your body and then your body just becomes a vehicle for your soul and, and you go through life feeling like really really grounded into your body so 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 grounded into your body so connected into your body um really like in a way that maybe you've never really experienced before so this is not about disconnecting from the body it's the exact opposite it's about getting so connected to the body that your the flow of life the flow of life like this this is heart-centered living in a way that maybe you haven't thought about before because i think sometimes when we say heart-centered living sometimes we think um you know it's all about compassion uh, and stuff like that and of course heart-centered living has an abundance of compassion right but it's not only about having compassion right it's not only about love and compassion and and forgiveness and all that stuff it is that but it is also just like dropping into your heart center and just allowing like energetically right energetically it's not about emotions it's not about feelings even it's about dropping into the the center like your center dropping into your center just dropping into your center and then allowing your soul to guide your body through life and then you never have stress about any decisions ever again because you know that you are on the path <laughs> you're on the path and how do you know you're on the path you know you're on the path because your body is sensing its way forward and you when you really 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 feel your body's instincts guiding you in that way when you really feel that then you have no fears about what might happen to you that day because you know that you're on the path right it, it's just the experience gives you the knowingness right this is not a knowingness that it's not about someone convincing you. It's not about, oh yeah, I know this and therefore I'm kind of convinced. It's like, no, you have this experience of it, right? So you really get to experience your life and you really get to experience your body and all the sensations that come in through your body and you really get to fully experience your life as your soul wants to live it. So this is all about returning to the self because your soul is not some thing outside of you your soul is you right your soul is you so this is all about clicking back into yourself and getting fully merged with your body so that you as your body can live through your life with a level of centeredness and clarity that you have not experienced yet so <laughs> i think that those are your messages for card number one. So sending you guys so much love and light. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Okay, card number two. I'm actually going to be drawing a bunch of oracle cards for you from this rose oracle. But first, let's take a look at the astrological kind of card I have here. I wanted to get a base energy for that. <laughs> North node, life's purpose. Did I say North node? North node? North node? <laughs> life's purpose. Okay, so if you don't know what your North node is in your birth chart, go check that out because <laughs> this is, it, it's 
going to be related to that, right? And you don't need to be super into astrology. You don't need to like know everything about your birth chart or anything like that in order to get a little bit out of your North node. Why do I keep saying that North node? I have never once in my life said that, but it's just like coming out of my mouth. I don't know. So anyway, you don't need to know a whole bunch about astrology. You could just literally look it up, like just put in your, find some website, put your birth data in, right? Find out what your North node is and then just look that up, right? It will give you some insight into what type of energy you want to lean into in this life in order to find greater balance, Right. The North Node, there's many, many different ways of looking at the North Node. So different ways might resonate with you more than others. So this one is like, you know, says life's purpose. Other ones say, you know, it's like your destiny. Other ones are say like, you know, that you need to move, like move away from the South Node and move towards the North Node. So I think at the end of the day, when you kind of sum all that up, <laughs> um, it's essentially about finding balance between the South Node and the North Node. So that you can think of that in terms of finding balance between the past and the future or your the kind of old you and the new you right and typically the south node is where you've been and that's the energy you're more comfortable with so it's about leaning into the north node to kind of cultivate that energy so that you can experience more balance in your life that's that's basically what this is about um finding the energy for you to lean into and to cultivate and to learn about and to explore because typically the north node energy is less familiar to you less natural to you something for you to explore so that's why it, like the specific this reading is going to be interesting because it's going to be specific to your personal north node that includes the sign right so like my my north node is in pisces and the house that your north node is in my north node is in the fourth house so big focus on <laughs> essentially learning about watery things spirituality and the home and emotions But like if you had a Leo North Node in the 11th house, that would be a completely <laughs> different situation. That would be for somebody with Leo North Node in the 11th house, their entire life story would be about learning how to shine as a bright light in the collective, right? Completely different. So yeah, look yours up and let's find out what other messages want to come out here. Temple of the Rose, the Thorn, the Bloom, and we are nature becoming grounded. Okay. Okay, so the card I am really drawn to that's like sucking me in more than any of these other four um is this thorn card the thorn it says protection boundaries clear communication this is i mean this whole deck has like a rose theme right and just imagine the thorns on a rose right why are they there what do they do i'm sure you've pricked your thumb on a rose thorn before right so this whole card boundaries 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 <laughs> boundaries 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 so wow my camera is freaking out chill out okay um i feel like this is the central thing that is going to help you find greater balance in your life what this feels like to me since this is the theme of going on your north node journey right figuring out what direction you're meant to flow in in this life trying to find more balance and even figuring out your life's purpose the thing that's getting in the way <laughs> um is not having optimized boundaries and i want to leave this quite open so you have to feel into how this works for you, right? Because some people have like no boundaries. <laughs> and so you people who people who struggle to set strong boundaries typically know who they are. <laughs> so, you know, if, if that's you, you probably know. So for you, that would be learning to erect more stable boundaries for your own, not even just protection, but just for your own sanity right for your own sanity um other people need to like learn to drop their boundaries need to like soften their boundaries selectively like when it is safe to do so right some people live behind such fortress walls that they never let anything in and so for those people again typically know who they are and so you know that for you it's a message to soften your boundaries 
And for other people, if like you don't have issues with people, then boundaries to me also is about standards, right? The standards that you hold in your life, like the things that you put up with. Do you put up with crap in your life that you just shouldn't be putting up with? Or, or alternatively, are you so rigid that you essentially never allow any messiness, any chaos, any uncertainty in your life, and you've essentially cut yourself off from all growth, <laughs> right? So the, there's like different ways this this can go for you. And but I, I I'm pretty sure y'all know exactly where you fall on that because I feel like most people are pretty pretty self aware in terms of their 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 situation with their own boundaries and with their own standards. Um, yeah. So first first step is to kind of zero in on how your boundaries and your standards are doing for you personally and you're going to be wanting to balance that out is what this is like balance out your boundaries and balance out your standards so that you can be more centered and more well-rounded is, is essentially um the thing about that is say you've been on one extreme right this is like just think of polarity if you've been on one extreme before you find your center right you want to get to the center that's where you want to be you want to be nice and centered <laughs> before you get to the center you might have to swing all the way over to the other extreme before you find the center Sometimes that's how life goes, right? So maybe if you're watching this and you just had an extreme swing, right? If you've been, maybe you've been super straight laced, you've been keeping it together, right? You never had any debt, you've been very successful, but then, I don't know, maybe an event happened that like derailed your life or maybe you just couldn't handle it anymore and you quit your job and now you're like living in a van, right? Something, something like that, however it is, like it's like, then this is referring to the event that's just happened to you, right? Like letting you know that don't don't worry, you're on the swing and now you're on the other extreme and eventually you find you find the middle point. You find the middle point. <laughs> Looking at this card. Temple of the Rose, ancient power, expression, activation, scarlet codes. Scarlet codes. This is um really making my third eye pulse. So whatever shift is happening in your lives, it is the, like, I almost want to say the direct result of a DNA activation, of an energetic activation, right? Like you're, you're being activated, your consciousness is evolving. And it's like, <laughs> once you take the sleeping bag out of the sleeping bag bag, <laughs> you know what I mean, right? We've all, but you get a sleeping bag, you buy it from the store, it's in one of those tiny little bags, and then you pull it out and it's all like enormous. And then it's only very special people who can roll them back up and get them back in the bag. I only know like two people who can do that. I can never get it back in the bag. I can never get my sleeping bag back in the bag. So this is kind of like that. Um, the new you, you're never going to go back to the old you never entirely right you will come into a more centered place right a more centered place but you're never going to go back to entirely the way you are and there could be some anxiety about that <laughs> um but it's like try try <laughs> try not to worry about it for a, like a little bit longer because it's going to become clear why you've changed right you're going to understand why you have changed and i feel like this is really more about you changing and maybe less about events having there could be, I mean, there could be chaos around you, right? You could have stuff, but it, it's like, this is really about you and your personal change. Like you have changed. You're different now. You're a new person now. And that is beautiful, but there can be those feelings of, oh my God, am I betraying who I used to be? <laughs> like those kind of feelings, right? Like, oh my God, like what the old me, the old me wouldn't like the new me. Oh my God. Like, did I betray who I used to be because I changed, right? And especially if you're someone who has, who has uh, suddenly had to erect firm and clear boundaries maybe you worry like oh now I'm going to be isolated now I'm going to be a hermit or and now my friends are all like butt hurt you know because I'm not talking to them or maybe I had a falling out because maybe somebody didn't like handle my boundaries very well and it like they, it freaked them out so now you may be wondering like what did I do did I just burn all my bridges <laughs> this, this feels like that but it's like honor the fact that the changes like you have changed and you've changed I almost want to like you have changed because you've changed You've changed because you have changed. The the your human self, like your physical human life, has changed because your consciousness has changed. Right? That that's that's what this is about. Your life is trying to catch up 
with the evolution of your consciousness. You have already changed. You have already become something new and your life is catching up. And so you're having to adjust your boundaries and your standards to adjust to the new you, right? Things, boundaries and standards that used to be okay and used to work and maybe you used to enjoy, maybe you used to like them, they're just, they're not gonna cut it anymore. You need new ones to, to match the new you, right? To match the new, the new you. And look at this, the bloom. Creations realized, right time, harvest, celebrate. So the timing is going to be different for everybody, but I feel like this is what's coming up for you, right? What's coming up for you? Because these two cards kind of felt like kind of where you're at and where you've been, and these kind of feel like where you're going, right? The bloom. It is time for you to bloom. It is time for you to bloom. And you know what? You had to <laughs> you had to be transplanted in order to bloom. You could like the pot was too small. <laughs> Your pot was too small. I just saw that was 4444 on the camera, right? <laughs> You had to be transplanted in order to bloom. Just like, you know, I, I mean, I'm no good with plants. I like, I kill all plants, even though I desperately try to make them thrive. I just, I, I have like a black thumb, right? <laughs> I just, I can't keep plants alive. My mom and my grandma though, they're like, you know, my grandma was a farmer and my mom's a gardener and like they have just lush, beautiful, gorgeous plants all the time. And so I always see them having to move plants to bigger pots so that the pots, so that the plant can can bloom and can flourish and if it's in a if the pot is too small the plant can't bloom it can't grow it's like trapped in its little tiny pot so you had to be transplanted into a bigger pot and now you have room to bloom now you have room to bloom and you're gonna get more comfortable with this because as soon as you <laughs> so plants can actually go through like shock when they're transplanted right even like you pull it out of their little pot and you can usually see you know if you if you garden and you know all about this right? Like the, the, the roots all snarled and they can even get like, that's called something, isn't it? Like root knot or root ball or something. There's like some, there's a, a term to describe like a balled up nest of roots that is slowly killing the plant. And so anyway, you get the plant all put in a new pot and now it has room to like spread its roots and all of that. And, but the plant can kind of go through shock where it, it all, sometimes it might start dropping leaves and you might go, oh my God, I killed the plant because I moved it to a bigger pot. It's like, no, that's just the process it's going through as soon as it like adjusts, right? As soon as it gets through the shock, then it's going to bloom, then it's going to shine, then it's going to grow, and then it's going to all be worth it. So you could be in this period of like, could even be culture shock. I remember when I moved to the US for the first couple of months, I, I was in culture shock. And at the time I didn't really realize it because you know, I'd been visiting the U.S. every, like, every couple of weeks for an entire year. I was long distance with my husband, um, and so I was pretty familiar with the U.S. by the time I moved here, but, it, like, finally when I moved here, like, the culture shock really set in, and I didn't really give myself enough credit at the time because I was in shock, right? Because I was, was in shock. I was in a new country, and it's funny, right? Because things between, you might think, oh, well, I can't be in shock because the difference is not big enough, right? Things aren't really that different, right? Things aren't that different. I can't possibly be in shock over this, but no, you can because it's energetic shock, right? Just because, you know, Canada and the US are two of the most similar countries, especially for me, I moved from Vancouver to Seattle, extremely similar cities in many respects. Um, and and yet the culture shock is still there. And at the time I thought, no, I can't be in culture shock because things are too too similar, right? The, the difference is they're, they're not significant enough. I, I shouldn't be in culture shock, but I was. And I did not give myself enough credit for that. And I ended up just kind of wigging out for a couple of months, like just not, uh, like not my, not myself, right? Not myself. So it's like you absolutely, you can be an energetic shock, even if your life hasn't changed that much, even if your life hasn't changed at all, maybe you have changed, right? That's this, what this feels like. You have changed because maybe you are aligning with your North, with your North node. You are aligning with your life's purpose, right? Even if you, ha even if this hasn't played out in your physical life at all, this has been playing out in the level of your consciousness, like suddenly, talking to different types of people, reading new things, watching different types of things, right? You've expanded your consciousness in some way, some way like this, this is, I feel like for this reading, um, <sighs> it's going in so many directions and I feel like different people are resonating on so many different levels. So that's why if you listen to me at the very beginning of the video, I said, this is like primarily an energetic transmission, right? So the energetic transmission for card number two here, this is about essentially recalibrating yourself after you have changed your consciousness, right? Your consciousness has leveled up. You've gone like gone up a grade, so to speak. Um, you've changed, you've grown, and now there needs to be this period of recalibration. And 
I've been through that a few times, right? So that's what I'm doing here behind all of the talking is that I'm transmitting the energy that will help you calibrate yourself to your new state of consciousness is essentially what this is, is about. Um, and finally, we are nature. Become grounded. Embodiment, living in connection. Yeah, <laughs> you will get rooted. You are getting rooted. You're getting rooted into your new new self, into your new consciousness, into your new place, right? For those of you who have moved or ha who have gotten a new job or a new relationship and it's like the newness is weird, you're going to get rooted there. You're going to get rooted there. And for what it's worth, getting rooted into your current state of consciousness it doesn't have to, I mean, it's not going to be permanent. It's not. You're just going to, you're eventually going to grow and get uprooted again. And you're going to get transplanted again, whether that's moving again or just expanding your consciousness up to a whole new level again. <laughs> that just happens again and again and again and again and again. So on the biggest perspective here, like if we big, big, big perspective, what you're actually doing here is getting used to the process of transplanting your consciousness you're getting used to the process of shifting your consciousness and then stabilizing yourself right because maybe in your life maybe you've had years and years and years and years and years where things were kind of more or less the same or maybe you were more or less kind of the same right and then you have this shift in consciousness and now you're new and different and maybe you're not entirely used to like getting rooted right and going okay i changed things changed now I'm going to stabilize myself. I'm going to get centered. I'm going to get rooted. Like that is a skill that in what I just described there, the process of going through change and transition and then rooting yourself and getting centered. That is a very, 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 very important skill, right? Because energy, the energy that we are living in is just going to get more intense. It's just going to get faster. Things are just going to get more chaotic and they're going to get more outside of your control. And your consciousness is going to continue to evolve faster and faster and faster. So there needs to be like what, what you're practicing here, right? On this hot, the highest level here, what you're practicing is changing and shifting and stabilizing yourself and then changing and shifting and stabilizing yourself and changing and shifting and stabilizing yourself so that you just boom, 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 so that you can flow through life like that, right? So that you can quickly, easily, with much agility, flexibility, and dexterity, shift your consciousness and then stabilize yourself for as long as it is useful to be stabilized. And then when the winds of change come up again, blow up again, and then you just, okay, I'm go I'm changing again. And then you boom, then, then you have, if you have a moment of stability, then you stabilize yourself, right? It's becoming nimble with your consciousness, becoming just flexible and dexterous, right? And your life events, like, teach you how to your life teaches you this right your life teaches you this so that is the big picture um and the as you change and shift and stabilize and change and shift and stabilize you are balancing out your south node north node energies right and you are coming from that center point right from that center point it's it, you you actually you act out your life's purpose most effectively from the center point, from the point of stabilization, right? So, you know, sometimes you can go from like south node, the south node energy, and then you do a big pendulum swing and you go whoosh, and now you've gone extremely into your north node energy. And that's sometimes that's a, um, a necessary journey to go on, right? So that you can experience both ends of the spectrum. But then um, sometimes when you're over here in the north node energy, sometimes you feel like, oh yeah, th this is where I'm living my life's purpose. Um, but it's typically not very stabilized. It's typically kind of erratic and kind of all over the place. And it doesn't tend to really um, bear fruit or doesn't typically last that long. I mean, which is fine. But where everything comes into fruition is in that center point, right? So sometimes the pendulum swings <laughs> and, and you shift and change and stabilize. But then you shift and change and stabilize again and you do it from the center. And then from the center is where you live out your life's purpose with most gusto. <laughs> with most gusto. Why is that the word? <laughs> and yeah, gusto. I think I think I want to leave you on the word gusto. I don't, I don't know why that's the word. <laughs> so I love you guys. Good luck on your journeys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.
Okay, this is the reading for card number three. There is something about you guys. <laughs> I could, as soon as I opened up my mouth, my energy had like changed. It is like sparkling. It is like up in my, my voice has cleared up. My, my, I think my voice sounds better than it did in pile two. <laughs> it's like something is clear. Uh, clarity of self-expression is what this feels like clarity of self-expression and there's like a zing and there's a zing to your energy i am very interested so i'm going to be using these wisdom of the oracle cards and but let's get your astrological influence first <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uranus genius right i was like there's something there's something different about you guys and you guys get uranus or uranus or uranus everyone is pronouncing it differently these days right <laughs> oh my god so higher mind aquarian age future people is what you guys are and very interesting so, especially if you're watching this while well, Saturn is still in Aquarius, so 2022 or the first few months of 2023, because there is, um, you know, in traditional astrology, Saturn is the ruler of Aquarius. But once Uranus was discovered, Uranus became the new modern ruler of Aquarius. So I feel that with Saturn transiting through Aquarius, it, there's like this passing of the torch type of feeling from old to new, right? The passing of the torch from old to new. You know, if anybody is watching this who was born in 88 or the beginning of 89, you have Saturn and Uranus conjunct. I know that because I was born December 22nd, 1988. So I have my sun, Saturn and Uranus all conjunct, but uh, so the Saturn and Uranus were conjunct for like an entire year ish right if you're born in 89 you'll have to like check to see how close they were um but th this is, so it's this passing of the torch from from old to new so i think about this a lot since my son is born on top of this energy right it's it's having two feet one feet in both worlds like one foot in the old world one foot rooted in the old energy and you're kind of straddling the line you're straddling the shifting of the age and one foot in the new energy and trying to balance both of it right but trying to balance both energies yeah, and so because this, <laughs> I'm talking about Saturn and Uranus because this is tuning into Saturn for this reading. And look who came out, right? Uranus came out. And it's funny because this is something I think about so much. So let's get some cards here. My whole deck was upside down. Tick tock. <laughs> So Saturn and Uranus are, I mean, Saturn is the Lord of Time, right? Traditionally called the Lord of Karma and Time. Tick tock, tick tock. I was actually thinking about this today because I was imagining making a video where I expressed, where I was just like, it just like came to me in my head, right? I don't know if I'm going to make it or not, but it, it was a kind of a cool idea. I was like, we could make, I could make a video where I just show through filming myself, um, my sun, my moon and my rising energy, right? And for, for the, my sun energy, my sun in Capricorn conjunct Uranus and Saturn, I, I was like, okay, I would have to show myself like wearing like a business suit because that's my Capricorn self and with a, a clock ticking in the background. So all day I was like, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, because Capricorn is really concerned with time. Saturn is retrograde right now. It's all about time. Uranus is like, but Saturn is like traditional to traditional time, the, the linear time. Um, but even that, honestly, honestly, I, I have this opinion, <laughs> right? It's just, a, it's just an opinion. I just have this opinion that um, Capricorns born in 88 and later are different than Capricorns born before that because in 88, that was when Uranus moved through Capricorn. And when Uranus moves through a sign, it like changes like and updates the energy of the sign of course uranus has been through capricorn before but the last time it was in like the 40s or something right um so probably very few people watching this video are were born in the 40s so <laughs> um <sighs> so that is to say this energy of it's a push pull. There's a push pull between. Yeah. Okay. I said, oh, was, there's a push pull. And this round and round is like something not quite 
it's like stuck in a loop, stuck in a loop, stuck in a loop, and something can be stuck in a loop because two energies are kind of not, um, something's not letting go, right? Something's not letting go. And I feel this has to do with Saturn and Uranus, almost like they're arguing. Oh my God, right now, so for the first half of 2022, I think, I don't remember exactly, so don't, don't quote me on this, I'd, you'd have to look it up. Um, but Saturn and Uranus are squaring off right now. They're squared in the sky, which is like, an underlying theme of many, many months, right? The energy that we're in right now, this many, many months long, the Saturn Uranus square. So, wow, there, <laughs> so much, so much about this. I'm trying to like wrap my head around it. So that's gonna be part of the problem um, that you're facing here is like you're chewing on some kind of time problem and it's a there's two things you're chewing on a time problem a time experience like an updating of your time experience <laughs> updating how you experience time that could be playing out in all kinds of different ways right in your life right now the other thing it, it's this energy of straddling the old and the new straddling it one foot in the old, one foot in the new, and you are the bridge, right? You are the bridge. Also with Saturn and Uranus, it's not just about old and new because what I was just saying about Capricorn energy being updated, right? I mean, I could go on a big rant on that, but I'll refrain. <laughs> All energies are getting updated, right? All energies are updating and changing and evolving. So, it, it's about bridging the energy, bridging the energy, like like a triangle, right? Like a triangle, bridging the energy, like a triangle. Um, just give me a minute. <laughs> give me a minute here. The star, so that's also Aquarius energy. That could very well be, you know, Uranus energy in the tarot. So this message, if, I, if I'm if i trying, I've been like talking around these points because there's all these different like pieces of information coming in, right? All these little pieces of information, all these different ways of looking at this. But what is this really about? This is about... <laughs> And the four of pentacles, again, this is, this is repeating. This is like literally repeating what I just said. Because here we have the future, Uranus, higher frequency, like light codes coming down, like star seeds, light keepers, all of it. And over here we have this four of pentacles, which is stability, old energy, earth, Saturn. <laughs> so, this is about you being a bridge builder, you being a a, a soul who bridges dimensions and you can think dimensions in many different senses of the word so this this is about you being a bridger is what this is all about um so some examples about how that could be playing out for you right um bridging cultures bridging cultures if you if you are bicultural right bilingual anything like that or if you've moved to a new place um, or if you associate with people from another culture, like frequently, right? Bridging of cultures. That's a very like human grounded way of looking at this. Um, but really for you guys, I feel like this goes like much, 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 much bigger, right? This is about um, bridging galactic cultures, right? Bridging galactic cultures, but also it's, it's more than that because I'm seeing the light coming like down, right? The light coming down, the light coming down. You're pulling the light down and up at the same time <laughs> you are the bridge almost like a circuit like a circuit like a fuse right because if you run too much energy through like an, an electric line right the fuse will blow you'll blow a fuse you guys are kind of like the fuse 
you bridge the dimensions, you bridge the lines of energy, and so you are a point of translation. You are a point of translation. The energy comes down from higher realms and it comes to you. And you are there to under, to receive the energy, to understand the energy on, on some level. You don't need to understand it all mentally. Translate the energy and then bring it down into the earth. It also goes the other way. The earth energy is coming up. The human energy, the energy of the human experience, the human condition, understanding that, bringing that up, sending that up and out so that the higher realms can more fully understand what it means to be human it goes both ways and you're this translation point you're the translation point there is something here this tiktok and this round and round this is something for you to break out of it's not that it has been bad or that it is bad or that you're doing something wrong it's that, sorry, I just got a really weird feeling in my throat. Um, this is like, it's just time for you to break out of some type of loop. This is almost like Groundhog Day, right? When, like imagine being stuck living the same day over and over and over again. You don't want to be stuck living the same day over and over and over again. You want to break out of the, break out of the loop. Break out of the loop. That's what you're here to do. One of the things you're here to do, right? To break out of this loop. It's like each and every... I've never received this message before. This is new. So this just in. <laughs> um, each and every one of you has been assigned a... Like a unique problem. And... Wow. Why is this card... It was facing up in the deck. So was another one. Oh my god, well, there's the devil, so that's Saturn. And the two of cups. <laughs> the two of cups, this is a lot like the lover's card, right? And the lover's card in the traditional tarot mirrors the devil card, because you have the devil and then the two people, right? And on the lover's card, you have the angel <laughs> and the two people, right? They're, they're mirrors of each other. <sighs> so as you break out of this loop, so let me finish what I was saying. This is each and every one of you have been looping some kind of problem, looping some kind of situation, looping some kind of, it's like an energetic problem. You might not have ever thought about it this way, but anything that like repeats in your life, anything that is round and round and round and round and round and round and round, right? And you're, you're kind of, you're done with it, right? Tick tock, tick, 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 tock. Um, anything that loops in your life, that's kind of the energetic problem you've been assigned to crunch. You've been crunching the numbers. You've been trying to figure it out. You've been trying to solve the problem. You've been trying to find the clues. And each and every one of you has, has a specific thing. So I can't tell you what this is. It's something different for everyone. Um, but it's like a recurring problem that you've had. And it's time for you to bust out of this recurring problem. That's what this is. It's time for you to bust out of the recurring problem. And you do that by finding the harmony, right? By finding the convergence by finding the convergence, by allowing the two to become one, by allowing the two to become one. This is like by allowing the past and the future to become one, by allowing like the old energy you have your left foot in and the new energy you have your right foot in to flow into, to flow into you, into the bridge that is you, into the fuse that is you. And for, for you to like alchemize it together, to fuse it together, to bake it together, to make it be, to become one. To become, to become one, to becoming one. <sighs> but this is also like high realms and lower realms, right? Higher realms and lower realms, higher realms and lower realms. This is what you're doing on, on the deepest level of your consciousness. It's getting the higher realms and the lower realms to become one, to fuse together, to understand each other fully. 
as if imagine wow actually oh my god i didn't even look at how i set up set up this white on top black on the bottom <laughs> I, I just i just clued in <laughs> just clued in just now um so the white half and and the black and the dark half right the white half and the black half the light half and the dark half to fuse those together you you have traveled through the realms of light you have traveled through the realms of shadow you have traveled the upper realms you have traveled the lower realms it all blends into one inside of you. You are the bridge point. You are the alchemical point. You are the center point. You are the bridge person. You are the bridge person. Your, your, your entire... Like, your entire soul's experience has been about this. I don't know how to emphasize how big of a deal this is. It's like, you are one of the consciousnesses <laughs> you are one of the types of consciousnesses who are able to do this to have a full experience of both worlds the old and the new the higher and the lower the light and the shadow right you you've experienced first you had to experience both in totality in order to describe them to each other just think you can't translate from english to german if you're not fluent in both languages i mean you know not if you wanted to be really good at it not if you wanted to be a, like a good reliable interpreter right you need to lean into both languages and if you're going to translate back and forth um you, you need to know both right so you have had to learn both that's why you are the bridge person with one foot in both worlds right one foot in both worlds The thing to break out of is trying to decide which one you belong to. The thing to break out of is knowing that you are both and neither and the point of unity all at once. You are both, you are neither, and you are the point of unity all at once. So no more this back and forth business. <laughs> no more this back and forth going, is it this or is it that? No more going, which is better, which is worse. N you can even drop out of which do I prefer and which do I not prefer. <laughs> it's just like ri rising above the polarity, rising above the duality, r rise rising up out of the, the, the dual experience, right? This is like a... You have this seed inside of you that allows you to return to unity consciousness. You have this like already inside of you. This is something anyone can can and ultimately will experience, but it's like not every single human on earth at this moment has this seed inside of them that is like ready to to bloom, right? It, it's like not... When you're planting a garden, I remember plant, planting planting beans with my grandpa. He would go because you know he was quite old, so he had, he he I was little, and so I would get down in the dirt and put the bean seeds in the dirt, and he would go around with his walking staff and he would punch a hole in the dirt with his stick, <laughs> and then I would squat down in the dirt and put the seeds in the dirt and then cover it up, right? And he would watch, and then he'd go and poke another hole, and I'd put the seeds in and cover it up, and so it's like we had to do that one at a time, right? One at a time. We had to go down the row one at a time. It's it's like that. You you can't instantly put the seeds in all of the holes all at once because there's one gardener, right? It's, of course, that, that's a very like linear example, right? But that, that was like coming to mind so strongly as a, as a visual. So just, yeah, just know that you have this seed inside of you that allows you to right now return to unity consciousness. Um, and another word I want to throw out there um, is catalyst. You are a catalyst Okay, you are a catalyst for consciousness. What does that mean? So you, you already know what it means to catalyze something, right? Like to make stuff happen, to make change happen, right? To, to get it going. Um, but there, you know, some of you already know this. Um, but just for those who haven't heard this 
usage of the word before, there is an idea, um, essentially I, I could say like a type of light worker who is a catalyst and this type of light worker, the catalyst light worker, um, spends a lot of, t of time out of their body in one way or another. This can mean someone who, sp like some of the more obvious catalysts go on meditation retreats, you know, for 10 days and they will sit in meditation for 10 days in that experience, you know, the they, they will have out-of-body experiences while they meditate for 10 days and they come back like completely changed, right? That's like transcendental, right? They have left their body and they have returned with something. Um, but I really feel like this experience of being a catalyst doesn't have to be that obvious, right? If, you, if you're someone who, I mean, because it doesn't even need to happen in meditation, like j transcending physical reality in order to leave and then bring something back that doesn't need to happen in meditation. It, you, cause, those of you who are catalysts and most of you watching this are, you don't actually notice or realize how much time you already spend transcending the physical reality. You know, it's, it's as simple as, you know, being a kid and getting diagnosed with ADD because you were always looking out the window daydreaming, right? And still daydreaming as an adult. This is somebody who's always allowing their consciousness to wander, right? Allowing your consciousness to wander always pondering the mystical, the spiritual, the supernatural, the mysterious, right? All of those things, all, all, all of these experiences that just kind of take you out of the physical, right? Helping uh, experiences of transcending the physical in many different ways. It's unique to you, right? Unique to you. I, f I feel really strongly here that some of you, probably most of you, <laughs> don't appreciate the level of consciousness that you have attained like there's like a comparison game going on where you look at people on youtube or social media and you go they're so much more spiritual than me they're so much myst more mystical than me they have all these experiences you know that i don't have but it's like you you are having them <laughs> you you are you're already there right you're already there you are already having these experiences they're just so normal to you that you haven't necessarily noticed them um and, and it's also, you know, just the comparison trap of thinking that people who are visible on the internet or in even in re or in real life, right, <laughs> that, that they are somehow more advanced than you. And it's just like, there's a really strong message here. It's like, you got to stop the comparison game and you got to um, just appreciate your, like your consciousness for, for what it is, because your consciousness is like... You know, I struggle to find the right words because I could say your consciousness is more evolved than others, but then, you know, that's more comparison stuff. But maybe sometimes, you know, maybe sometimes you just, you need to do the comparison thing, um, but in, in a way that actually empowers you and makes you go, oh, wow, I, I actually am. <laughs> I actually am as spiritual or mystical or mysterious as these other people, right? It's like, I actually am on my, on their level. I actually, we're all we're all peers here, right? We're all peers here. So any feelings that you have of going, oh, you know, this, this can't apply to me or, oh, like I can't be that special or, oh, I don't feel like I have mystical experiences or, oh, I can't possibly be a catalyst because I don't meditate, stuff like that. It's like those, those thoughts are just hold, holding you back, right? Those are the thoughts that are holding you back. You, it, you might feel that your level of consciousness is holding you back, but it, your level of consciousness is already like blown out of the water. Um, the, the only thing that's holding you back is the thoughts that make you feel less than you are, right? So big time to let those go and to just really, 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 really notice and appreciate your own experiences for what they really are right? Your own experiences for what they really are and feel into your soul and feel into the vast expansiveness of your soul and know that, you know, you, you are out there. <laughs> You're out there in the universe. You're out there. You're not just this small human experience, right? You are out there. You are vast. You are enormous. You are out there all the time. And this other thing about being a catalyst is that you're like very, 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 very like strongly connected with your higher consciousness, right? Your expanded consciousness, the, the, the rest of you that is out there traveling the quantum, like you are connected, so connected 
to the point because that that's how you translate right that's how you translate there has to be you're you know sure you're down here in the physical body but you're also up here as a blob of energy out in the universe you you, you can't be the bridge you can't be the bridge without having a foot <laughs> on both sides of the river right <laughs> you're planted on both sides you're planted on both sides so you have your own very 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 firm well constructed bridge and you are the bridge you are the translation point so it's just like it's time to know that <laughs> it's time to know that because the, this round and round these thoughts these thoughts they're they're keeping you small and they're keeping you from really owning your mysticism or your spirituality or your energy work it's like keeping you from owning it and loving it and experiencing it and sharing it for what it is right so I know this this reading has been kind of all over the place, but I mean, that's what it's like. The more the more abstract people I'm reading for, the more abstract the messages are, and the more like non-linear anything everything gets. So I, I'm gonna resist trying to tie this all up with a ribbon. I'm just gonna leave it as is. Yeah. I don't even know how to exit this reading. I'm gonna I'm gonna get you guys just like one extra little card. Let me see, just to conclude. Because I feel like there's this, you guys are kind of a walking contradiction because on the one hand, it's like, I can feel how vast and how abstract your consciousness is and how significant and universal your energetic function is as a consciousness. But on the other hand, it's like, there's like this, Maybe not all of you, but a significant number of you are, are being like weighed down by these thoughts of I'm small, I'm not psychic, I'm not interesting, <laughs> like uh, uh, like th those kind of thoughts, right? Th those are just, they're weighing you down. They're weighing you down. So that's, it's just time for those to go because it doesn't fit with you at all. And this, this card just jumped right out. So <laughs> you want to fly like this little birdie, sing your song, sing your song. Transform your worries into love notes for your divine friend to offer to the world. Let your deepest feelings inspire the composition of a new harmony, a new harmony. Recognize this as another form of the sacred expression of your soul's desire to remember the answers to life's most important questions. Why am I here? Am I living in according? Am I living according to my true nature? Am I offering enough love to a torn world? Inspiration is seeking you in order to transport your heart out of its slumber of forgetfulness into the beauty of your spirit's true song. <sighs> okay, guys, my dog is poised to start barking any second now. So I love you. Talk to you later. <laughs>
feeling done, but this is a porcupine here. So also like fending off any offers of help. Hierophant with the queen bee. So deeply deep spiritual connection to your higher self. Six of cups, <laughs> getting, receiving visions from past lives and the moon with the three of wands. Holy shit. Okay. Ace of pentacles. Um, I feel like I don't know what to say because you guys don't know what's going on. That's a, that's a funny thing that, I mean, you know, anybody who does readings, you will already know about this, but this is a funny thing. Um, when I do readings for people who are feeling very uncertain, it makes me feel very uncertain because I reflect your energy, right? So if, if there's a whole bunch of you who aligned with card number four and you're all kind of in this place of massive uncertainty now i feel massively uncertain because you guys feel uncertain and so that puts me in this very interesting space where it's my job right my my role my task to just sit with the uncertainty and to just observe it and to know that the uncertainty itself is part of the energetic pocket right this is just there's a vortex of energy that all all of you have created and i sit here and we're just we're in this vortex and this vortex feels uncertain but and you guys might be feeling, having feelings about the uncertainty, right? You might be going like, I don't like this. This is bad. I want to feel more certain. Um, for me, my task is to sit here and just go, okay, so we feel uncertain. Where do we go from here? What, what, what is this about? Um, and the first thing that we do when we are in a vortex of uncertainty is to just know that that's fine. That's normal. It's just an experience. It's just a wave of energy. Um, and it too shall pass, right? It too shall pass. So... <sighs> I mean, there can be any number of things happening in your lives that you are feeling uncertain about <laughs> and stuff like that. But I, I feel that for you guys, the, the root of this is it's like a, a spiritual awakening, a third eye awakening. This this feels like you are, you are either relatively new to your spiritual path um, or if you're old hat at this, you're having this like massive third eye awakening where suddenly you're like receiving, like noticing energies that you never noticed before, receiving like images, messages that you never noticed before, seeing things like like psychic perception, like clairvoyance coming online um, or mediumship abilities coming online. This is like stuff is happening, stuff is changing and it's like obvious, right? And when, so when that happens, um, when you have like a big third eye awakening or when you have a sudden spiritual awakening where you never really were that spiritual and now suddenly it's like you're nine to f like not even a nine to five it's like a 24 7 thing right um there's like a side effect of that where since your third eye which correlates specifically with your like pineal gland and your pituitary gland in your brain are going through shifts right is it there those like physically, physically your body is changing and adapting. Your brain is changing and adapting to go along with this expansion of your consciousness. And so I'm try, trying to zero in on my point here. It's like, yes, you are uncertain because of the new experiences that you are having, the things you are seeing, the things you are sensing, because it's all weird and you're like, what the fuck is going on? But more to the point that the energy, the, the, the energy of uncertainty itself is just coming from the fact that like you are uncertain <laughs> like that's like that that is what i mean but it's not what i mean because it, it's not about your mind being uncertain okay it's not about your mind being uncertain it's not about you like can't decide what to eat for dinner although that might be happening right that's that's not it it's like it's a deeper level of uncertainty it's like your vibration is uncertain it, it's like you don't know where you like your it's like your consciousness is having trouble locating itself in space time is what this is there's like an energetic thing going on with you that is making you feel uncertain so all of the human experiences of uncertainty are a side effect right <laughs> they're just the side effect so you don't need to worry too much about the physical human experiences of uncertainty that's the energetic side effect of the fact that your consciousness is like currently 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 like like evolving itself like really fast so it's like being on a boat right with lots of waves you and you can feel seasick because it's like the boat never finds any stillness right because it's just getting rocked around by these waves your consciousness is kind of in that kind of state where it's like 
in the spin cycle. <laughs> so you, you're, and the, the way I see your your consciousness is like you're a swirling ball of light, but you're you're swirling ball of light that's kind of all over the place, and it's like your consciousness is literally having a hard time anchoring itself down into a point in space-time. And of course your consciousness is never really anchored down into a point in space-time, but the interesting thing about the human experience is that we typically have this linear experience of time where we get funneled through this, you know, we think that th that we think that we experience life moment to moment, day to day, month to month, when really that's from the experience, from the perspective of our higher consciousness, that's not how it works, right? Time is non-linear. But it's like your your linearity is breaking down. <laughs> your linearity is breaking down. It's like your soul is almost like, um, it's like the tracking is off. You remember like old VHS tapes and um, right when they would go all fuzzy, you'd have to play with the tracking on the VCR remote, right? To, 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 like, to like try to get it because it would go all wonky, right? So it's like the tracking is off. It's like your, your consciousness isn't tracking a straight path anymore. Your consciousness is not tracking a, a straight path anymore. It's kind of like all over the place, right? So that's what I mean. It's like your your human self feels uncertain because your consciousness is like literally in this period of uncertainty. And the thing is, it's only humans that don't like uncertainty. Out, out in the cosmos, uncertainty is everything, right? Just go down the quantum rabbit hole and everything is is uncertain right <laughs> so it, it's it's the human the human self the human self is the thing that doesn't like uncertainty so the first order of business is to kind of just get okay with the fact that that you feel uncertain get okay with the feeling of uncertainty right get okay with the feeling of uncertainty some people honestly like can li like live in a feeling of uncertainty all the time it depends like how what you like how you naturally were <laughs> right if you were more of a person who likes things to be organized <laughs> like like likes to keep things together likes to have a schedule likes things to be predictable likes like you know that it's this is going to be harder for you but it's going to be even more exhilarating once you lean into the skid <laughs> right lean into the uncertainty Sarah, that was my dog being rude. You know, my dog kind of lives in a constant state of uncertainty. He never knows what's going on, right? He never knows what's going on, but he don't mind. I think right now he wants dinner. I think that's his problem. He's going to have to wait because <laughs> it's a little early for his dinner. I think I got him to settle down. So his problem is he's uncertain about when am I ever going to give him dinner, right? <laughs> And he is staring at me trying to get, trying to force me to give him dinner, even though it's not time yet. So, <laughs> okay. You will be able to reclaim your energy when you stop fighting the uncertainty. You're like actually like exhausting yourself fighting the uncertainty, right? It's not, you, you can't fight the uncertainty. You, you gotta, <laughs> things will never really be certain again, right? People sometimes talk about, you know, returning to normal, but there's never going to be normal and there's never even really going to be a new normal because we are in a constant state of change, right? So the huge underlying thing to your reading here is like having to reconcile yourself. Maybe that's what it might feel like, right? Having to reconcile yourself to a constant state of change or a constant state of uncertainty. Um, but more you want to, you can start there if that's where you want to start, right? But you can move up into a feeling of like accepting uncertainty for being like the natural state of the universe and then also moving into like loving the adventure of it, right? Loving the spontaneity and the constant surprises of it. And just know here you got this Hierophant and look at this, this is the queen bee, right? This is the queen bee. This is your connection to your greater consciousness. Look at all these honeycombs. Look at all these honeycombs. I can actually kind of feel somebody trying to like decide which honeycomb is the best, <laughs> which honeycomb should you go down? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You never need to spend any iota of time trying to decide where to go or what to do. Just go. Just pick, just pick a honeycomb. Just pick a hole. Pick a rabbit hole. Pick a direction. Just go, right? The universe has got you. You've got yourself. You don't need to know. You don't need to understand. Just, 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 just do it. <laughs> just go, right? Just go. And for the other thing happening here with the Six of Cups, to me, the Six of Cups is always a past life 
thing, um, but also for those of you watching this, relevant to the Saturn retrograde, right? The Saturn retrograde is throwing us into this deep, like, it feels like reviewing of the past. There's like weird memories coming back up. It's memories from this life. It's memories from past lives. It's like dreams about people you haven't seen in 20 years coming up. Um, people from the past coming into your life. Weird past experiences coming into your life, right? This bit weird past loop. Um, and man, I've even had things like I wa like watched a random episode of a random show on Netflix of like a, like a 20 year old show. And I remembered seeing it before when I was a kid I remember I could like and even as I was watching this I was like wow this is so familiar but I've never seen this show before there's no way I've ever seen this but I must have like you know back in the day I must have been channel surfing and I must have like watched that episode randomly and then completely forgot about it but as I was watching it I was like kind of remembering it and I could see myself like on the on my parents couch as a kid like watching it it was so weird um anyway so there's all this stuff from the past coming up <sighs> which is also like making it more difficult for you to connect with your current moment because if this is like really hitting you hard especially if you're watching this sometime where there's like more retrogrades like a mercury retrograde or something um it can make you feel like like you're dislocated in time and honestly to a certain extent you are dislocated in time right you are dislocated in time because your linearity is unraveling <laughs> um you will have more experiences in the future of your linearity like re-establishing itself but just know that when your linearity re-establishes itself and you find yourself on the straight path for a while that that's that is it, it is also temporary right you'll, you'll have experiences of walking the path and you'll have experiences of being all, all over the place and it's just going to keep changing like that so this is also a message of practicing non-attachment to wherever you're at and to just really feel into the fact that you don't even need to like attach yourself to your emotions because your emotions are just reactions to the energy that you're sensing and the energy that you're sensing is just energetic weather right like so if you're having intense emotions about things that you are experiencing if you're having intense emotional reactions to things in your life it's kind of the equivalent of having an intense emotional reaction to the weather. Of course, we all have types of weather that we prefer, right? If if you look out the window and it's not the type of weather that you prefer, yeah, I mean, you're going to you can feel like, "Oh, that's less than ideal," right? But you're not probably not going to have like a big emotional reaction to it, right? You're just going to be minorly uh, minorly dissatisfied, right? if it's not the weather that you like. So same type of thing with the energetic weather. If you like, it doesn't matter what you're feeling. And sometimes this is easier than others, right? Cause sometimes the energetic weather is like bright and sunny. And sometimes the energetic weather is dark and stormy. Um, but again, if you can just think of the, the energy that you were sensing, and here's the thing, some of you might not notice, like you, you might be overly identifying with your emotions and thinking like, these emotions are mine, these thoughts and feelings, they are mine. Well, the thing is most of them aren't, right? Cause you're just a consciousness you're just a piece of awareness floating in the universe. The thoughts and feelings that you are experiencing in your human body are like most of them. I mean, some of them could be generated by you, but most of them have been generated just from something else, right? We, we don't even need to get into like all the different places that thoughts and feelings come from, right? But they've been generated by something else, by someone else. And now they're all floating around and you're picking up on all of them because you are incredibly psychically sensitive, energetically sensitive to thoughts and feelings. And you're running all these thoughts and feelings through your human body. And like, so they're not yours. They're not yours. It's, it's like, you know, when, when you walk out into the rain and you get wet, well, the, you got wet, but the rain wasn't yours. <laughs> it just, you got rained on, right? So if you wake up and you're having a bad day and you're crying, it's like the energy is raining on you is what that is like literally it's the energetic weather and you went out in the rain <laughs> without a raincoat on without an umbrella without rain boots and now you're wet right now you're crying because it's energetic weather so i think the metaphor of weather right could really help you um practice a little bit of non-attachment from the thoughts and feelings that you have when you don't want to have them right um and just know that okay that i'm having all these thoughts and feelings and really it's because I'm sensitive to the energetic weather and all of these thoughts and feelings are like rain coming from somewhere else and I'm just sensitive to them. And if I can just 
that like that can really help you take the pressure off and you can just you can just like back off of it right and be like okay okay like <laughs> whatever it's just the weather right it's just the weather it's just the weather <sighs> yeah and to just a final thing on the six of cups because i got on a whole different tangent there but this is about past stuff coming up so also in terms of energetic energetic weather it's also like energetic weather coming up from past lives where you are feeling sensing experiencing emotions and even thoughts and even like impulses from past lives right and that's really cool because then you're integrating and and helping resolve the energy of that life um but you don't need to get like super attached to those experiences because they're just passing right we we when we like stitch together um little bits of energy from like past lives or cross connect we cross connect with our past lives um it's like a temporary thing typically right most of the time it's a temporary thing we, we cross connect we do whatever energy work is relevant and then we move on so again it doesn't like require this big attachment to it we can just handle it handle the weather take bring an umbrella dry off continue on and <laughs> finishing off here with the moon and the three of wands and well i mean you know what the moon i don't really have anything else to add that has been this whole thing right soul being you being incredibly sensitive you having this deep spiritual awakening and this um reflecting other people's energy right being in the energetic weather and so this three of wands the three of wands is that launching off point a takeoff point but for the three of wands to finally take flight right we have this bird here taking flight there's like a moment where things click into place with the three of wands that's where you're heading you're going to be clicking into place because there can be with did i already say that did i say with the three of wands there can be a return on investment <laughs> right that's like one of the traditional interpretations of the three of wands that i find you know I like it because who doesn't like a return on investments, right? So that's why I mentioned that, maybe mentioned it twice. <laughs> the return on the investment is the clicking off point and the launching off point. So things, it's like there will be a shift. Uh, like It's like up into a higher level. I'm seeing like a spiral staircase. There's like a spiral staircase and you're getting up to a higher level. It's like your elevator ride is going up, right? You're taking flight, you're taking flight, you're taking flight. And you'll be flying above the water. You'll be flying up in the sky and you'll be gaining perspective, right? You'll be gaining perspective. This is a little bit like you've been kind of down in it, <laughs> kind of down in it, but you're going to be launching up above it and getting perspective on everything that you've been, that, that you've been through. Um, but it's like, there could be this spiral, this spiral, and then there's like uncertainty <laughs> and this like, what the hell's going on? And then the launching off, right? But then first something resolves and then the launching off and that's about as specific as I can get on this type of energy. It's just that everything is, because all of you guys, your energies are like moving, 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 flowing, 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 evolving, shifting, changing, getting ready for takeoff. So, and I mean, of course you are, because when you go through these, whether it's like a new spiritual awakening for you, or whether this is a deep third eye expansion already inside of a deeply spiritual experience for you i mean this is right the, the, you're just in that pocket of transformation and then you know lift off from there so i was going to get you one last card to conclude i got my eyes closed when i shuffle these by the way get in there curious rest yeah, if, if you're in that pocket of uncertainty, it can be like the hanged man card, right? You can feel like you're in the silence, in the stillness, just in a deep freeze even. That's perfect. That's where you're meant to be for right now, right? The, the takeoff, the launching, the bird's eye view, the flight, that's coming. But first is the rest. Whether it's the windiest of days or the quietest of days, a little dose of curiosity will go a long way to brighten it up. Lean inward and inquire within your heart if some insights you seem to have suppressed cannot be rekindled. 
it's only been safely stored away so that now that you are receptive, it can be revealed in light of today's awareness. There will be a subtle recognition, an inkling, an intuitive understanding of having been heard, even if your mind is still in doubt. Say a quick hello to your wise self then and have a conversation about life's more recent happenings. Do also relinquish that arduous and useless undertaking of trying to fix it or figuring it out. Just be there in delight. Yeah, while you're in the uncertainty bubble, you don't need to understand anything. You don't need to figure anything out. Just, just exist and get ready to take flight. So I love you guys. I'll talk to you later. <coughs> Bye. Pretty kitty, I need you to get up. I got work to do. Pretty kitty. <laughs> it's time to get up. <laughs>